Hi everyone, we're here on day four of the challenge and I'm joined by the lovely functional medicine health coach, Becky Spencer. Hi, Becky. Hello. Good to How see are you doing today? I'm good. I'm great. So Becky, I'm very excited to hear about how you're approaching this challenge. I've known Becky for a few years now since I moved to Bermuda and we've shared so much of our journeys. So take it away, Becky. How do you get started with loving awareness? Okay, so loving awareness has been a big focus of mine um, even before this um, because I definitely have that little voice in my head that you know chatters at me all day and is not always kind. We all have that. Um, so focused on uh, focusing on self love and being paying attention to yourself, talk and being kind to yourself um, is huge for me. That's been a big focus and. Um, I, even as far as, you know, I have been on a roll with my, um, exercise so far this year and on Monday I wasn't feeling well and I couldn't do it. And I, I, I broke my streak and I was really upset, not really upset, but I was, I was beating myself up a little, but I caught myself and I realized, okay, this isn't helping by, you know, beating myself up, just get on it and do it the next day and start again. So I did. So that was big. Um, and that's what I'm, you know, trying to really have my awareness, you know, staying in the moment and having my awareness of what I'm saying to myself, you know, throughout the day. My other huge one. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, do you have a phrase, Becky, that you say to yourself, like when you get off or, you know, I love me, I love, appreciate myself, or is there anything like that that you do? Um, so that's interesting. You ask that because I did a meditation a month or so ago. And in that meditation, the word stay here came to me. And it's not necessarily a, a, a kindness thing to myself, but it's it's more of um, stay right here. You don't need to go in the past. You don't need to go in the future of, you know, oh, you've messed it all up or anything like that. It's just stay right here. And it's about being present, but it was like this very clear voice to me. So that's like, that's now my mantra, stay here and just, you know, be aware of not just your surroundings, but your thoughts all the time. Right. It's beautiful. That's, that's been really helpful. Um, the other one I wanted to talk about on the loving awareness, which is huge for me as well is gratitude. I've always practiced gratitude, but I've really ramped it up in the last year. And I have my beautiful gratitude journal. Oh, lovely. I love the colors. I love that mandala almost. Yes. So yeah. this is one of Amanda Temple's here in Bermuda. She's an amazing artist and photographer. And it's actually not meant to be a gratitude journal. It's meant to be an actual like, you know, daily diary um, journal for your, your tasks and whatever you're doing through the day. But I actually incorporated it as um, a, a gratitude journal just because it is so beautiful and she has little quotes throughout. So I used it last year and I loved it. And I literally have it out. You'll see it around my house. Like I was just doing it in the morning, but now I'm trying to incorporate it in the evening before I go to bed. And I'm noticing now because it has become even more ingrained in, in my life that throughout the day, I'm like, oh, I got to go write this in my journal. So, you know, once you create that habit, it, it builds on itself. One year I did um, a, a year of gratitude, daily gratitude. Um, it was an actual challenge, like it had a hashtag and everything. And I did it through pictures because I I'm also a photographer. So I did on Instagram every day I'd post a picture of what I was grateful for. And that was really fun. So there's lots of ways you can incorporate it in. I love that. And you've got so that because we know when you write things down, it registers in your brain, but also the visual imagery of a photo can really just touch us. And when you share it again, other people can be touched by that, too. Yeah. And you might even notice that you're already doing that on your phone because we all take pictures all day. Right. So you might even, you know, like on my walks all the time, I'm taking pictures of nature. So, you know, that's just little things that you can be grateful for just being in the moment with that, that leaf or, you know, that's that flower or whatever it is. So, yeah, I love, I love gratitudes and gratitude also keeps your vibration high. Like it keeps you in like a, a mindset and a, and literally a frequency which, you know, when they say, um, raise your vibe, it's really a thing. So gratitude keeps you in that higher vibration, which helps everything. Your, your healing, your mindset, everything. I agree a hundred percent. If there's one thing we can say is just thank you. Be thankful for what we have. Very much so. Yes. 
And what about the food section? Narrowed feeding window. Because <laughs> Becky is a health nutrition coach. <laughs> Becky's a nutrition coach, but she's also human. Let me just say that. So um, I'm really good at the no food three hours before bed. And that's been in that section. I would say that's been my focus because I have had some, some gut issues on and off over the last year. And I notice when I eat later, or if I got into the snack, the snacking, you know, oh, I'm just going to have one square of dark chocolate before bed or whatever it is, your body has to deal with that as you're trying to sleep. And it can't, it can't do the healing and the digestion and all the detox it's supposed to do if you eat too late. So, and then, you know, and then you might notice you're getting gas or bloating or things like that. And that can get you down a bad path. Right. So I think for me, and I think everyone should really incorporate this on a regular basis is no food three hours before bed. And it, it does help with your sleep and everything, because then you're not, your body's not trying to deal with all that. Yeah. I see such, you know, especially on the, the blood sugar monitors, I see such bad results when people eat late at night, it spikes their sugar. And then they say they don't sleep well. And then the morning they're, you know, they wake up groggy and tired. And really it's that food late at night. We're not designed to eat that way. So, uh, and it's kind of an easy rule to go by in many ways because just, you know, kitchen clothes, right? Shut the fridge door. <laughs> just don't yeah. go there. Yeah. yeah. And also, you know, being aware of what you're eating in the evenings, like they say that um, eating our carbs in the evening is better for us because that helps us sleep better rather than, and, and then also the size of your meal too. Even if you are eating, you know, no food three hours before you could have a huge meal and it's still, you know, having, putting a strain on your digestive system when your body's starting to like slow down in the evening. So eating your biggest meal in the middle of the day is also a, a, a good habit to get in rather than eating dinner being your biggest meal. Great idea. Good idea too. So what do we have next? We have autonomic pairing. Yes. So this is all about the nervous system and, you know, being not being in that fight or flight um, nervous system all day, which a lot of us are with our stress and everything. So um, again, being an observer of your thoughts and emotions and breath. Um, I'm not a really good breather. So I have to sometimes remind myself to breathe. Or I notice if I'm like hunched over or, you know, not sitting up straight, especially when I'm eating and you'll notice this when, when you're hunched over, you're, you're putting pressure sometimes on your diaphragm or your gut and you're not digesting your food as well. So just sitting up and, you know, being able to breathe mindfully as you're eating will help the digestion and everything as well. Um, That's a good reminder, yeah. Becky, because so many people too, right. Eat in front of the television. You know, and when you're eating by the TV or just with the plate in your hand, people are hunched over because I try to encourage my patients to really take the time to set at a table, you know, have a nice environment where you're eating, maybe put a candle on, set a placemat and then take that time to sit upright. But I never thought about really it's it's the breath, too, and it's your position as well as the environment that's making the difference for for digestion. Yes. And I, I started doing that. I, um, that was another thing I incorporated in last year was starting to light a candle at dinner. It just, it just adds something. It just, it does. It puts you in a certain mindset. Right. And I think as many tools as you can use to set your body up for, Hey, this is what we're doing now. We're, e- we're eating, we're getting ready to do this thing. I think it just, it, anything, little thing like that you can add in can help with, you know, the digestion and everything. It's almost like you were adding those like the little habits, but then allowing our body to get in tune with it, right? So it knows this is time for digestion and then all those wonderful enzymes and everything get released so that we can digest the food properly um, and don't end up with all the problems with the microbiome, which is a whole other conversation. We'll have to do a video on that one day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. And then again, pairing your nervous system with the current task. So being present, that's just, I even thought of, you know, getting a tattoo, although I don't really want to put the chemicals in my body, but I even thought of literally that stay here. I mentioned putting it on my wrist. So I see it all the time. So I'm always staying present. 
And, you know, there's so much talk about mindfulness out there and there's so many studies about how good it is for us, but it's so, that's one thing that is so easy to fall off the wagon. Right. And, and we can be our own worst enemies with that. Yeah. It's so true. That ability just to be present. I remember when I first started mindfulness training over 10 years ago, one of the things they, they said is when you're in the shower, just focus on being in the shower. And we kind of take that for granted. You're like in the shower, of course I'm focused, but then you think, oh no, my, when I'm in the shower, my mind is racing because I'm thinking about how quick can I get this done? Because I have to go to work and what am I going to have to do at work that day? And then through the practice every day that week, we had to focus on the shower and it's like, oh, I love the hot water. I love the bubbles. Like I love the smell of the soap or this shampoo, you know, it really makes a lot of bubbles in my hair. And then it's like, wow, each of those little things, if we become more and more present at each moment, mm -hmm. then again, we're not worried about the past or regretting the past or worried about the future because we just keep coming back to that moment, that stay here moment. Right. And engaging all your senses. And I don't know if, if you, you have this, but I noticed that most of like my aha moments or my ideas will come in the shower or in the car because that's when our, our actually, we're actually in the moment doing those things. And we're not like everywhere else thinking of all the other things. Although I do now listen to podcasts in my car. So, <laughs> but you have your walks on the beach. So I bet if you continue with those, you're going to have lots of aha moments uh, walking. Along. Oh yeah. Any time in nature is, is, is definitely a time that you will get those little downloads. Wonderful. And what's your big one then? So our next topic is your big topic. Um, rest and recovery is next. Oh, rest and recovery is next. Okay, you're live. Yeah. Okay. So I, um, I went through a lot last year. And one of my tools that I used was the Artist's Way, which is a program for writing and getting people back into their cre creative self and um, kind of in tune with spirit or whatever your higher self is. And so with that writing, you have to do it first thing when you wake up. And I always like, I was like, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. But I actually started getting up earlier. And then I started paying attention to when my body actually wants to get up. And I noticed that my body actually wants to get up at 5 30 or six. And I've never been a morning person, or I've never called myself a morning person or put that label. Right. And I started doing it. I started getting up when I first wake up rather than trying to turn back over and go back to sleep. And, and then also getting to bed by 10. So I don't get that second wind. And I will tell you when you sleep that way and get in tune with what your body actually wants, you have so much more clarity. You're so much more energized. It's living in the natural rhythm of not just our body, but nature in general. Right. And so that's been a huge one for me getting, I do, I do need like seven or eight hours of sleep for sure. Um, but I think some nights I was getting even nine hours of sleep. And I think you can get too much sleep too, where you wake up groggy or I noticed too, I'd wake up if I, if I rolled back over and went back to sleep, that's when I'd get in this really vivid, deep dream. And then I'm like trying to pull myself out of this dream and feeling groggy. So well, I think with the sleep timing, like you said, most people do need seven to eight. Everyone wants to underestimate it. But what I see in practice is because I ask people, are you well rested when you wake up in the morning? And the majority say no. They yeah. still feel that they want to lay in bed, but it's because they went to bed at midnight, right? So our body needs at seven to eight. But if you're sick or if you have things that go on in, in your life, like you've had some, you know, you've had COVID like all of us this year, but you know, when you're recovering from illness, the body needs more time because yeah. our sleep is our rest and repair mechanism. And yeah. so I think we do need those little extra bits. Um, yeah. So it's nothing to, to say that you don't need it. Um, we don't, and there are a few people that I see that are kind of the out of the box people that can get by with six hours of sleep at night that can well, keep going. My husband is one of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the majority of us, no, seven to eight. Um, we definitely need it. And I think, you know, as we kind of go through, we get a little bit older, we realize that it's not, it's not a game that we have to stay up late to do anything. It's okay to say, all right, 930 time to get ready for bed. I forget what the term is, but there's an actual 
term for what it is in the evenings that people get this thing where they like, oh, I've worked all day and I haven't got to do anything I want to do. And so their evening is their time, their me time. And so that's why a lot of people get into this habit of staying up later because they are trying to get in their time of what they want to do. And it might be just, of course, you get into the scrolling habit or whatever. For me, it's reading. I like to read. But um, so, yeah, you can get into the habit of that because you get you know, mad that you're not getting enough of your time for yourself throughout the day. So incorporating that in throughout the day somehow could help with that whole, you know, feeling of I need to catch up in the evening. Yeah. Cause the best reward I think we can give to our body is to allow it to sleep. Yeah. Cause we're, I'm even allowing myself to have a little nap in the afternoon if I need to. Luckily I work from home a lot. So I have that, that time and I, you know, I have some downtime before I have to, like, I kind of have a transition time from working to um, when I have to get, make dinner and do all the family stuff and the house stuff. So I, that's when I read um, something. And then sometimes if I'm, if I'm quite tired that day, I will just close my eyes. And if I fall asleep, I fall asleep. And sometimes it'll be just 10 or 15 minute quick nap. And it's so restorative. And then I don't feel so grumpy when I have to, you know, come up with dinner, fix dinner. And maybe I'm, you know, a little too tired to do that that night. So that's been another thing with sleep I've incorporated in as well. Yeah. So take your, have your reward as an afternoon nap rather than trying to stay up late because your, your body will, um, it definitely helps your body more than the late night. So napping yeah. is good. Approved. Napping. Yeah. And you yeah. know, that might even be something that helps someone not reach for the sugar in the afternoon. You know, they're just getting that little, that little um, bit of, of what their body needs. And they're even putting sleep pods in offices now. So people can do this. Like there's definitely a benefit to having a little rest and letting your body just, your brain just shut down for a bit. A reset. A reset. Yeah. So now tell me about the big thing, both you and I are going to work on this year. We said fitness, but joyful movement. So how is this going for you? Joyful movement. So one of the things that I am trying to do, well, for one, I've incorporated in walking, which I love. So that's one of my joyful movements that, because I love being out in nature. So I've always chosen my exercise to be outside as much as possible. And then you're getting, you know, a double benefit because nature is so healing and energizing for us. So I'm, I'm going on my walks quite often, but I also am trying to mix it up more where I'm adding yoga back in because that's, that's working different muscles and doing different types of yoga. Um, I love to, um, if I, if I need another, um, kind of like exercise or, uh, energy boost in the evening to make dinner, or even if I don't, and I'm just making dinner and, you know, I put some good tunes on, I'll literally be dancing around my kitchen. And I can tell you dancing is a huge, great workout. Like I will be sweating. And that's just from like, you know, 15 minutes of dancing around my kitchen. So that's something anyone can do. And that's, that's total joyful movement. Cause you're listening to music that's lifting you up and that you love. So, um, but yeah, mixing it up as much as you can where you're, because if we get into the same rut of doing the same thing all the time, it doesn't, it doesn't always have the exact benefit. So even on my walks, I do different routes just to let my brain have some different stimulation. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's great to be out in nature, the walking and then the dancing. One of the things that I have is on my phone, like I have YouTube, but I have a little, my dance happy channel. So that's the songs that I just kind of go to that yeah. I know I can dance to um, because it's just fun. Like if you're feeling down, it's really hard to have a bad mood. If you put on a nice, like, I don't know, Shakira or some kind of dance tune yeah. and dance along to it, then your body, it's just, re it's um, rejuvenated for sure. Yes, for sure. And I, I make um, playlists on Spotify for that. You know, I have like my inspiration one or my dance one or my mellow one for whatever mood, right? <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's a, one of the, the things I see on your list is Tai Chi. And that's one of the things I really wanted to try this year, something new. I've always wanted to try either Tai Chi or Qigong. So um, that's like a nice gentle movement, which at this age, my body likes more gentle type movement. And the other movement I need to incorporate in is the strength training. So that's definitely weight lifting and, and some of that that has to come in. 
Well, I think from the weightlifting, I started this program called Less Mills. It's out of New Zealand. And when you talk about joy, feel like, you know, weights can be something you go to the gym, you push the weight on your own. But honestly, doing this program, it's online. My neighbor and I are challenging each other with it. And like they make these videos, they have great tunes. There's wonderful backgrounds. And so it actually, if I can say, it's a joyful weight training session because they have so much fun doing it and they have all these kind of fitness coaches. So I think we can find fun in anything that we're doing. And if we find that we are bored, go look for something else, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're not going to stick with it if we don't have fun doing it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, they say variety is the spice of life and that's true for everything we do. Like, you know, eating different foods, moving differently, like that helps your whole, your whole being to spice it up yeah. and having fun. Yeah. yeah. So um, as we get ready to wrap up Becky, so one of the things that I requested from each uh, co-host was a word of the day. Uh, so what would you like to share with the members that are watching? Uh, my word will be breathe. Breathe. Just a reminder. Oh. Fundamental. It's key. Key to health is just to breathe. Yeah, I know. And that's the thing about all of this is there's just those fundamentals that are like non-negotiables, right? Oh, I like that word. And I guess that's a great takeaway for people as they're going through these five days, because of sure, there's lots of topics that we speak on, but what are your non-negotiables? Yeah. Like whatever it may be for you, whether it's not eating before bed, whether it means you're always going to sit at the table to eat, that you're going to do a 30 minute walk every day. But when you say this is a non-negotiable, then that's it. It becomes your habit, just like you brush your teeth, just like you take a shower. And then that is part of your life. Yeah. And then as you go through your day and you're trying to make choices of what you're doing with your time and you have your five non-negotiables or whatever, however many there are, you, you look at your list and go, am I doing that or am I doing this? And if that's your non-negotiable, then you know that that's something that you want to work into your day. Well, thanks for sharing so much with us today, Becky. Uh, I'm sure all the viewers will benefit and I'll talk to you very soon. Have a okay. great day. Thank Bye. you. Bye.